RCS thruster test in three, two, one, ignition. Yeah, that went good. Okay, that's good. Should I should I actually bring this recorder next to the decompressor down so we can actually get some nice audio? Then if we mix it in, uh, it should be more believable. Wait, is this thing still rolling? Hi rocket fans, welcome here at the rocket shop at Copenhagen Suborbitals. My name is Adrian. I'm a mechatronics engineering student from Germany and currently proud intern here at Copenhagen Suborbitals. My project is a small, scaled down, simplified version of a reaction control system. The speaker rocket will be controllable by slightly adjusting the direction of its exhaust gases uh, from its main engine. But as soon as the main engine is cut off, it doesn't have this capability anymore. And after that, the capsule is separated and completely on its own. So the capsule needs something to control its orientation. For example, you don't want to re-enter the atmosphere like head first or tumbling. Cats, when dropped under normal conditions, will invariably rotate their bodies longitudinally in midair and land on their feet. This automatic reflex action is almost completely lost under weightlessness. So for that reason, you want to have a system that can stabilize the capsule and cancel spin and that you can used to point the capsule in any direction that you want. Pigeons normally keep their bodies in a horizontal axis while in flight. These zero-g birds have lost their feeling for what is up or down and point in all directions, some even flying upside down. Those reaction control systems or attitude control systems usually work by having tiny rocket engines placed on the perimeter of the capsule. But instead of using igniting liquids that we mix together and combust in a combustion chamber, we will just use something way simpler and safer, which is compressed nitrogen. Currently, I'm working on building a small simplified demonstrator unit of such a system. So a small device sitting on a table that can rotate, and then hopefully you will be able to stop its rotation on its own. The main components are a pressure tank, some piping, some sensors, uh, fill and vent valves, and the valves that actuate the thrusters, two of them, uh, mounted around the perimeter of the system. The main reason I'm building the system is basically to measure the thrust and total impulse I can get out of the whole thing, which I did some calculations on, but I want to see how close to reality those are. And then I'm going to take this knowledge and provide the capsule team with some educated guesses on how to design the reaction control system for the speaker rocket. I'm test fitting all the parts, making small adjustments, so that when they all fit perfectly together, we can fill it up with water and test it for leaks and pressure test it to see that all the parts actually can hold the pressure and are safe to use. After that, I have to get the electronics part done. And then we are ready for the first small tests with pressurized air, testing for thrust, and then testing whether it can rotate. I really want to thank the COPSUP team for letting me do this. This project is basically the definition of mechatronics. It spans so many domains. It obviously has mechanical parts, but also fluid and thermodynamics, electronics, informatics, it's all in there. Projects like this are the main reason why I started studying mechatronics in the first place. I also want to thank all of you, the supporters that 
enable this amazing project that is Copenhagen Suborbitals. I've been following them for a few years before I came here, and I can just say they are brilliant people that get the most out of every penny that gets here. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, and I guess we'll see each other again when I do some testing. Until then, bye.